Hey guys, Josh here from Momentum Productions and today I'm going to show you how to properly balance your Jiwen Crane gimbal. Today I'm going to be balancing the Sony A7R2 along with the 16 to 35 millimeter Zeiss lens. This is a pretty heavy setup, but it's still doable on the Jiwen Crane. It's important to remove all camera straps, lens caps, and insert all batteries and memory cards before you start balancing. We want this camera set up exactly how we want it right before we start shooting. So zoom is another factor. Make sure you set your zoom on your lens to the focal length that you want before you start balancing. Zooming in or zooming out changes the balance and it can also put more stress on your motors and suck up more battery life. So the better balanced you have your gimbal, the better battery life you will get and the smoother shots you will achieve. All right, let's get started. I'm gonna start off by mounting the camera. So I screwed on my camera mounting screw up here. This is just an area where you can store your screws. So you can store your lens support screw here or here. And the same thing with your camera mounting screw. So I'm gonna take my A7R2. Now the trick is, is to make sure that the motor is on your right side. The next trick is to place your camera all the way close to the motor. You actually wanna touch the pitch motor with your camera. Next, I will securely mount my camera. Just like that. It's also important to make sure that your camera is mounted on straight. Make sure it's nice and tight there. Now that it's mounted on nice and straight, we can start getting to the, the real balancing part of this video. Now I'm not going to be using the lens support mount here because I don't, I don't feel like I need it, at least not for this lens. Uh, maybe when I'm zoomed out, but that's not really necessary. So I think I'll leave it the way it is. I won't need to adjust anything here. However, we do need to adjust the tilt. If I let go of the camera, you can notice how it just tilts all the way down. It's really front heavy. So the only way I can compensate for that is if I move this plate to the back to compensate for that front heavy weight. So I'm gonna loosen up this and I'm gonna push the camera plate back just a little bit. Then we'll lock it up and we'll see how the tilt is. Now you can always prop up the motors by supporting them with your hand and just focus on the pitch motor at this time. It's still pointing down. So I'm gonna push the camera back some more. Let's see how that does. Again, support the other motors. And now you'll notice that the camera became back heavy. We pushed it way too far back. So let's push it a little bit forward now. There we go. Now, if I leave the tilt motor alone, you'll see that it is perfectly balanced. Next, we can lock up the tensioner supporting this plate here for moving forward or backward. Now it's all locked up. Now it's a good idea to memorize the markings here, the numbers that are printed on the side. If you memorize these numbers for this lens and camera setup, balancing next time will be a lot quicker. The same goes for any one of these adjustments. There's numbers printed on all of them, so you should take note after balancing. So now moving on to the roll arm. As you can see, if I let go of the camera, it wants to lean over to the left. So I'm gonna prop it up and loosen up this tensioner screw right up here. And since the camera wants to lean to the left, I wanna push out this arm to the right to compensate for that left heaviness. Okay, I pushed it over a little bit and it's still leaning to the left, so let's push it out some more. Okay, we pushed it out too far. Let's push it back in just a tad. And there we go, it is balanced. Now we can lock it up. Next, we have another adjustment here on the side. So this is another tilt motor adjustment here. This is a pretty important adjustment, but it can be tricky. Up or down is our adjustment here. So let's loosen this knob up 
So what we want from this is we want to be able to position our camera up or down and we want it to stay in that given position. So let's say I want the camera to tilt down. I should be able to release my hand and the camera is still supposed to be pointing in that same direction without popping back up again. So that's the kind of balance we want here. So this is like a trial and error process. So we can push this up. Tighten it up and let's see what happens to the balance. Whoa, see how it's going too far back here? That means that this adjustment is way too high. So let's drop it down a tad. So let's loosen it up. Drop it down, tighten it back up. And let's see where we're at. So now the camera's flopping forward. So let's bring this adjustment back up just a tad. Very minor adjustments here. You always want to keep your other hand on the camera just so it doesn't drop down or just ruin the adjustment process. Look at that. The camera is up in a vertical position and it's staying there. How about in the normal position? Perfect. How about down? Excellent. Now we've made three adjustments. So basically our roll arm is adjusted, our pitch arm is adjusted, and our camera sliding plate is adjusted. So what this means is that I should be able to put my camera in any position and it's supposed to stay. See that? That means we have a perfectly balanced camera. Excellent. Now there is one last step and this is the pan motor. We have to make sure that the pan motor is properly balanced as well. So this is how we are going to make this adjustment. This is another tricky one, guys. So to make this adjustment, I should be able to pick up my stabilizer, lean it back, and it should not swing around like that. So this adjustment has to do with this screw right here at the bottom. All we gotta do is loosen it up. Let's see what happens if we push this arm back. Pick up the stabilizer, lean it back. What happens? It still swings forward like crazy. So what's gonna happen if we push the arm forward? still swings in that direction. Okay, so let's try pushing it back quite a bit. Okay, it swings a lot less in that same direction. So let's push it back some more. Wow, it stopped swinging. Now we have a perfectly balanced camera. Now, for some instances, you don't have time to rebalance when you zoom in and zoom out, right? So I strongly suggest that when you wanna quickly zoom in for a tighter shot, put the crane in standby mode by pressing and holding the mode button until all motors shut off. Then zoom in with your lens. And if you don't have time to rebalance it, then quickly take the stabilizer off from standby mode by pressing and holding the mode button and you are still good to go. See that? Of course, zooming in or zooming out and not properly balancing that change can affect your battery life. But for quick shots, it's perfectly fine. Now I don't suggest zooming in or zooming out while the crane is still on because if I try to zoom in and zoom out, you can notice that the roll arm is moving. Some lenses, like Zeiss lenses especially, have a really tight zoom ring, which means that it does take some pressure to turn that ring. So using that pressure can actually mess with the roll arm on the Jiwen crane, and it can add unnecessary pressure. That's why I recommend going to standby mode and making that zoom change. Well guys, I hope this video has taught you how to properly balance your Jiwen crane, and I promise you that this is the first step to achieving beautiful smooth movements with your Jiwen crane. In the next coming tutorials, you will see how to properly walk and hold your Jiwen crane. By following those techniques, I guarantee you that you will get the movements and the shots that you've always been craving for. Thank you so much for watching. Please like this video, share it with your friends, and also subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. You can also check out my website at www.capturethemomentum.com and sign up to my free newsletter where I give away cinematography and photography tips. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.